Friends, it was with a good conscience and a moral imperative that I have supported Israel and Israel's right to exist. I believe that Israel has a right to exist, but I did more than believe it. I acted upon my beliefs. And in the Congress of the United States of America, I have voted for more than $50 billion in support to Israel. In the Congress of the United States of America, I've gone to the floor of the House of Representatives and I've made many statements in support of Israel. It was because of my conscience and because of what I perceive as a moral imperative to support Israel's right to exist. I believe that this same moral imperative that compelled me to support Israel's right to exist compels me to now have to support Palestine's right to exist. <laughs> to support a Palestine that is free of occupation. <laughs> to support a Palestine that has a right to self-determination. It is a moral imperative to do this, but I have to make my case. I have to make my case for this moral imperative. Surely you understand, and many others do, but there are many who do not. So please now, indulge me as I make the case for the moral imperative to support a free Palestine, a Palestine that is not occupied and has a right to self-determination. Friends, Prime Minister Netanyahu has indicated, and this is from CNN, January 20th, 2024, Israel will not compromise on full security control on Palestinian state. No Palestinian state. I'm going to read this very brief article. This is um, by Jerusalem Post staff. I read the Jerusalem Post on a daily basis. It reads, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated on X, formerly Twitter, on Saturday evening that he would not compromise on complete Israeli security over the entirety of the land of Israel, including the West Bank. The land of Israel, including the West Bank. The land of Israel does not include the West Bank. The land of Israel does not include Gaza. I believe in a state for Israel, but there has to be a place and a land for a state of Palestine. Mr. Netanyahu is having a reach that is too far with his statement. He goes on. He emphasized that this decision is not conducive to the formation of a Palestinian state. I will not, these are his words, I will not compromise on full Israeli security control over all territory west of the Jordan. Netanyahu went on to say, and this is contrary to a Palestinian state. Now for Edification purposes, when you say full con security control of all west of the Jordan, you're saying from the Jordan, which is a river, to the Mediterranean, which is a sea. You're literally saying from the river to the sea. He's saying that there must be security control for Israel from the river to the sea. This statement is something that I'll get back to in just a moment. But it's important for you to remember that this is the statement from the river to the sea. Let me go on to make my case. Israeli ministers or minister denies the existence of a Palestinian identity. Inviting U.S. rebuke. This is from CNN, March 21st, 2023. It reads, Israel's far-right finance minister 
denied the existence of a Palestinian people or nationhood over the weekend, prompting a rebuke from the United States just weeks after calling for a Palestinian town to be erased. The prime minister has indicated that from the river to the sea, Israel will have control. We now have the finance minister indicating that there does not exist a Palestinian people and that the nation of Palestine, or at least a city in Palestine, should be erased. It says more appropriately here, a Palestinian town should be erased. Friends, when you talk about erasing a city or town, a people that they don't exist, you now are becoming, with your words, an existential threat. We have to concern ourselves for the Palestinian people to the same extent that we concern ourselves for the Israeli people. We cannot have a double standard. Both have the right to exist. And by the way, this minister, this finance minister, he is still the finance minister in Israel. There has been no removal of a man who has made these kinds of statements with reference to the people of Palestine and a city, or what I would call, as they call it, a town in Palestine. Let us go on. This is an article from the Knesset.gov, the Knesset News Press, and it was released on July 18, 2024. It reads, this is the style of it, Knesset plenum votes in favor of declaration stating that parliament opposes the establishment of a Palestinian state. The article itself reads, Knesset plenum early Thursday voted in favor of a declaration, and it gives all of the persons who sponsored it, and this declaration is on the topic of statements and reports around the world regarding the recognition of a Palestinian state and Israel's need to prepare for a possible diplomatic challenge. The resolution passed by a vote of 68 to 9. This is in the Knesset. The Knesset is the equivalent, well, quite similar to, I should say, our Congress. Not exactly the same, but quite similar to our Congress. In February, the Knesset plenum passed a large majority resolution stating that the Knesset objects to unilateral international recognition of a Palestinian state. Israel, by and through its prime minister, by and through its elected officials, indicates that there should not be a Palestinian state and also wants the world to refuse to recognize the existence, the possible existence of a Palestinian state. What they're saying is, stop calling for a two-state solution. Friends, in 1948, Israel made a request when Israel was in a land called Palestine. Israelis, to be more specific. It was not Israel at the time. Israelis, to be more specific, they were not Israelis because Israel has not been, uh, had not been created at the time. So people who desired a state to be called Israel made a request of the UN that they have statehood. The United States was the first nation to recognize Israel as a state. This was over the objections of Palestinians. Israel became a state unilaterally without the consent of Palestinians. Yet today, Israel, by and through its agents and their policies, has indicated that there will not be a Palestinian state, and we don't want you to ask for one, also we don't want you to recognize one. I believe the United States of America has a right, a duty, a responsibility, and an obligation to recognize a Palestinian state. A Palestinian state has to be recognized. We have a moral imperative. Ah, 
the declaration reads as follows. This is the declaration. These are exact words from it. The Knesset of Israel firmly opposes the establishment of a Palestinian state west of the Jordan, from the river to the sea. The establishment of a Palestinian state in the heart of the land of Israel, claiming now all of Palestine, in the heart of the land of Israel would pose an existential danger to the state of Israel and its citizens. Perpetuated, perpetuate the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and destabilize the region. They're of the opinion that allowing a Palestinian state will destabilize the re region and perpetuate the conflict. Well, friends, I do believe that denying Palestinian statehood is going to perpetuate the conflict. We have for too long now, too long denied Palestinians a state. The conflict continues. I have no evidence that the conflict will cease and desist because there is a resolute nation of Israel that opposes a Palestinian state and is encouraging the rest of the world to do a similar thing. I said to you earlier that I would get back to this phrase from the river to the sea. I want to call to your attention now something that we had to vote on in the Congress of the United States of America. It is a resolution, HRES 883, expressing the sense of the House of Representatives that the slogan from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is anti-Semitic, and its use must be condemned. I want you to know that this resolution passed the House with more than 300 persons voting for it. 44 did not. I was the one of the 44. Now let's read just a bit from the resolution. The resolution reads, whereas the slogan from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is anti-Semitic, is an anti-Semitic call to arms with the goal of the eradication of the state of Israel, which is located between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. One has to ask, what is this resolution passed in the Knesset? It says, from the river to the sea. But what, what is that resolution? Is that anti-Palestinian? And it goes on to say, whereas the slogan seeks to deny Jewish people the right of self-determination and calls for the removal of the Jewish people from their ancestral homeland, I have to ask, what are the settlers doing on the West Bank? I have to ask, what, what is happening in Gaza, where we have thousands upon thousands of people who've lost their lives? Children have lost their lives. What, what is happening there? If, if these statements are true, when we have these other things occurring, can we not at least give some credence to the notion that they, they are suffering taking place in Gaza, that people are being removed from their homes, their homes are being decimated, their schools have been decimated, not all, but most of them. Their health care infrastructure is being decimated. Let me go on to the resolve portion. And there's much more in the resolution. I would beg that you read it. It's HRES 883. It is resolved that the slogan, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is outrightly anti-Semitic and must be strongly condemned. If this is the case, and you can make the case for this, I believe the case can be made for the statement indicating that from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, 
there will not be a state of Palestine, I think that is anti-Palestinian. I think such a statement ought to be condemned, and today I condemn a statement from the Knesset that calls for a, a state of Israel from the river to the sea because it does not take into consideration the plight of the Palestinian people and their need for a state. It goes on to read, this slogan is divisive and does a disservice to Israelis, Palestinians, and all those in the region who seek peace. Mr. Netanyahu, when you read this, surely even you would be, even you would be concerned when this says that if you're seeking peace, you're not going to a uh, claim all of the land between the river and the sea if you're a Palestinian. You can't claim all of that land. But then you in your Knesset pass a resolution doing just that for the people of Israel. How can you contend that that will bring about peace in the land wherein Palestinians and Israelis should live in peace together in a two-state solution. You're calling for a one-state solution, and that one state would be the state of Israel, and that one state would then deny Palestinians the same amount of independence, the same amount of self-determination that you want for yourself. I reject that notion that Palestinians can't have the same self-determination as Israelis. You go on, or we go on in the House of Representatives to read it resolved. This slogan rejects calls for peace, stability, and safety in the region. If the slogan rejects calls for peace, safety, and stability, then what does the passage of this resolution do? It, it is the same thing. The difference is the state of Israel, through its elected leadership, has the ability to enforce what it says. And those people who are protesting for Palestinians, they don't have that same ability. They are out in the street, they're protesting, and not all of them are engaging in violence. I support those who are engaging in the peaceful protest. I believe they are right to take up this cause for the Palestinian people. And those who are engaging in violence, they ought to go to jail. They ought to be locked up, OK? I, that's my position. I was locked up when I resisted arrest. I was locked up. I was willing to suffer the consequences. If you engage in something less than peaceful protest or other than peaceful protest, then in my opinion, you have to suffer the consequences. Don't burn things. Don't break things. If you're engaging in peaceful protest, let your message be the means by which you call to the attention of the public the cause that you have chosen to, to take up, not your behavior that is going to be destructive. It goes on to say, this slogan perpetuates hatred against the state of Israel and the Jewish people. My dear brother and sisters of the Knesset, your statement does a similar thing to the Palestinian people. And you ought to rethink your statement if the statements do this, if, if the statement from the river to the sea in the streets is going to create harm, then the statement from the Knesset creates the same harm to the Palestinian people. And it goes on to say, anyone who calls for the eradication of Israel and Jewish people are anti-Semitic and must always be condemned. I agree with that. I agree. I agree with that. But I also say that this finance minister who called for the eradication of a town, a Palestinian town, that that too has to be condemned. 
Where is the condemnation from the Connecticut? Where is the Connecticut from the Knesset? Where is the condemnation from the House of Representatives that speaks to what this prime minister's finance minister has done? It is time for us to take a stand for justice, for justice. This is, this is justice for Israelis, Israelis and Palestinians. It's time to call for peace for Israelis and Palestinians. We cannot have peace for one side and an injustice being perpetrated against the other. All sides, all sides should receive justice. We cannot, we cannot call for the condemnation of the killing of Israeli babies and then condone the killing of Palestinian babies. All babies deserve justice. All babies. We cannot, dear friends, and I see a professor here who understands these issues very well, James Douglas, professor, former dean of the law school at Texas Southern University, taught me law, former president of Texas Southern University. He understands these issues very well. We cannot, we cannot allow ourselves to have a double standard when it comes to the way we impart justice. Justice has to be imparted with one standard. One standard for Palestinians, same standard for Israelis. One standard for Israelis, same standard for pa Palestinians. It is time for us to rely on that thing called conscience to motivate us and inspire us to take up the moral imperative to say to the world that there must be a Palestinian state, that Palestinians deserve the freedom to have their self-determination determined by themselves. No one else should determine what, the, what Palestinians' future should be. They should determine it. I believe finally this. I believe finally this. that when I go back to Congress, I have a duty to do some things that may cost me dearly. I have been told already that some of the things I've done will cost me dearly. But here's what I believe I have to do. When I go back to Congress, I am going to conclude that we should not send more munitions. I don't want. I don't want my fingerprints on the bombs that are killing Palestinians and killing Palestinian babies more specifically. I refuse to vote to send another bomb to any country that's going to do this, but especially to a country that's supposed to be our ally. I refuse to do it. I'm not going to vote to send any more munitions, any more bombs. I believe I have to use my vote to say to the world and to the Congress of the United States of America that these appropriations bills, these appropriations bills that allow for monies to be used to fight a war, more specifically, the war be that is in Gaza, I won't vote to support those bills until further notice. Consider me a no vote on such bills. You got to take a stand. I'm standing, I'm standing with people, human beings. I believe that we have a responsibility to, in the Congress, those of us who are of a like mind, I only speak for myself and everybody who agrees with me. I don't speak for any organization. I'm not speaking for any caucus. But I believe that we have a responsibility to now, in the Congress, take up a resolution calling for a two-state solution. We have not passed a two-state solution resolution. I have one that has been filed. We need 
to pass in the Congress, in my opinion, a resolution calling for a two-state solution, a state for Israel, a state for Palestine, side by side, in peace, in peace. I plan to push my resolution. And I believe that <clears throat> at some point on the infinite continuum that we call time, we are all going to have to account for our time. I believe it. I believe there will be a day of reckoning. And I believe that on this day of reckoning, somewhere on the infinite continuum, maybe sooner than we think, I don't know. But I think that we're going to be judged by how we treated those who are suffering, those who are among what I call the least, the last, and the lost, how we've treated the people who have been abused in Gaza, people who've lost their homes, their livelihood, had to move time and time again to avoid death and destruction. I believe we're going to be judged on how we handle that. I also believe we're going to be judged on how we stand for or reject the killing of those persons on October 7th. I don't stand with the people who did that on October 7th. I think that that was wrong, and I am today condemning that again. I've condemned it before, but you can't condemn one side and then decide that it's okay for some reason. Those, those babies should not have died on October 7th. Should not. You, you, can't, you can't do this. If you want a one-state solution, then you're not going to have the peace that you seek. And the current Israeli government seems to want a one-state solution. Hamas wants a one-state solution. I am antithetical to Hamas. I'm antithetical to this current government. I'm antithetical to a one-state solution to the conflict. There has to be two states Two states, one for Israel, one for Palestine, both living in peace. That's the only solution that's going to work. No other solution is going to work. So for those who differ with me, I respect your opinion. And I only pray that you will respect my opinion. Because I'm not for killing of those babies on either side or the people on either side. I want to see peace. I want peace in Palestine, and there is a place called Palestine, and I want peace for Israel, and there is a place called Israel, and both places have a right to exist. However, one of them also has a right to exist as a state, as a state that is not occupied, as a state that is free, as a state that de determines its own destiny. I believe that these are the things that I should do when I get back to the Congress of the United States of America. I will do them. And I will do them as I'm calling up uh, my friend Bishop Dixon, if you'll head this way. I will do them whether anyone agrees with me or not, but as long as I'm in Congress, I'm going to stand for peace between Israelis and Palestinians, and I want to cease the killing of Israelis cease the killing of Palestinians. I'm calling for peace, and I believe that you've got to be careful, Mr. Netanyahu. You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. We don't want to broaden this war. We don't want a conflict to go broader than where it is now. And some of the things that you are doing are pushing us closer closer to a broader conflict. And I want you to know, I'm not going to be supportive of a broader conflict. I am not. I believe that you, Mr. Netanyahu, have no right. I'm an America first guy. You have no right to drag this country into a war. You don't have a right to do that. We have been your friend. We've supported you. We've supported Israel. 
But I don't support your pulling us into a war, which is one of the reasons why I did not come to hear you speak. I refuse to hear a message in the House that is going to, going to devote itself to an unending war. I'm not going to support that. You know what I support. You know where I stand.